My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay This by Downfall. Uh, we have our characters starting to get to Ascension 11. So if I want to be doing the individual focus level up, I think I now skip, instead of going to the slime boss, to Hexaghost, and then Champ, and then Automaton, and then we just cycle around those three until each of them is level 11 as well. And then we will start the focused Ascension grinding for them. Hexagos Elites are tougher on the Ascension 8. Cool. Let's see what we can do. Rare colorless card to obtain. Lose all souls. Yeah, that's a good opener. Or is it? Secret Weapon could pull the right weapon out of the deck at any point, right? It's a skill, and it then gives us an attack. Uh, so that could be good for trying to jive our way through the rest of the deck. Thinking Ahead can do the same kind of thing. Um, less reliably, but then it also sets up our next hand. It's also draw positivity. Well, ish. Right, it's deck manipulation. Let's draw uh, neutral. Because you're putting a card back atop the deck. Wow, we actually only have the ability to go for one elite, regardless of what path we take. I'm probably not capable of doing that much damage early on. So, I think I'll take my path out here. Get thinking ahead upgraded. No. It's always going to be float first, even in that circumstance. Maybe if we got something like an apotheosis, would have been, would have been right, but not in this circumstance. Okay, so we advance. And then we're thinking ahead to put a strike back atop the deck so that we can soul burn. Great. So now I know that I've got an attack in the next hand. And we do get the second one, so we have the ability to trigger that there too. Beautiful. Great fight. Really demonstrated the value of the thinking ahead pickup there. Impard Flame, Haunting Echo, Searing Strike. Let's take the Impard Flame. Doesn't really hem me in too much as to what I'm going to have to do in the future. Um, just thinking ahead and see what we get here. Fine. Just going to defend, defend, and defend even one more time. I might have gone for defend and double strike if I had have gotten the resources for it. Really? I was very much just hoping that they weren't going to both be attacking this turn as well, but evidently they will be. I'm not going to even have two skills to trigger the Crushing Ghost Flame, even if I went for that one. Ugh. I guess I float forwards then. There you go, you got me. I'll take two damage. And now we'll claim our kills. Defend, float forward. Kill the backliner so that I wouldn't be weakened, despite the fact that it doesn't actually matter. It's best practices, typically. Stoke the fire, Spectre's Whale, and Heat Metal. I'm not really keen on any of these here. Heat Metal deal 8 damage after Soul Burn, detonate something to enemy, apply 12 Soul Burn. It's like an interim Soul Burn piece right there. There's obviously Spectre's Whale. Any fight where I really need AoE, I need more than just one trigger of it. I think we'll hold off there. We've got a lot of upcoming fights. We have the ability to be a little bit picky here. Yeah, this is going to be Strike, Strike, Defend. I'd love to have gotten the Impound Flame out there, but it has to be Strike, Strike, Defend. All right. Thinking head our way into Float. Cool. Put the Strike back off the deck where you float forwards and then Double Strike as well. Then having the intensity gain card left in the deck is really, really good here because we get to impart flame and defend ourselves for a lot. So that's for the base. Huh. It's, it's the whole, like, does the intensity hit before the activation of the Ghost Flame or not? Because it does for the Crushing, or it does for Inferno, but it doesn't for Bolstering? Uh, 
extra crispy. Carlson Ghost Flame supply two more soul burn. No, not really. I'll take a Sword of Night just to have a little bit of extra damage in the deck as well as another attack. Speaking thereof. This is going to be Sword of Night Strike Defend. Frailty's pretty rough on us, unfortunately. Double defend, see if we get a single strike against the frontliner. We do, we kill it. Now we're all good. The rest of the fight should be fine. Uh, I'll think ahead first, just in case I get an attack. I don't. Doesn't matter what I put atop the deck, because I'm going to be floating forwards to get an empowered flame out anyway, and it's striking. Okay, defense. And you die. Time of need, spectral spark, searing strike. Apply six soul burn. If the active ghost flame is ignited, extinguish it and return this card to your hand. I've not used this yet. And yet Sal says it's really, really good. And I trust Sal. I am not going to be taking the curse there though. Lizard tail, when you would die rather heal to 50% of max HP once once. Um, let's me take some extra risks next floor, maybe. No. Let's just not even get close to that if we can. Okay, this smith has probably got to be spectral spark. Makes it 50% more effective. This one's going to be rough, but I really, really dislike turning down this relic when I have the ability not to. That sort of knight would be nice. Uh, let's pop the Essence of Steel. I think that's actually probably going to be worthwhile here. We'll throw the Seer on the target that's already had some. Okay, so... Apply six. If it's ignited, extinguish it and return this to your hand. So I sorry, apply nine. That was ignited, so it returned to my hand. It's also being extinguished, so I can redo it, but it's showing that it's not extinguished, but I'm pretty sure it still is. Yeah, I can reactivate it. So do that. Okay, I understand how to use this now. Should have finally played it against the frontliner again. Uh... That'll do. Okay. 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 I know what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the run then. Yikes. Yeah, if I hadn't misplayed earlier, we would have avoided that extra two damage there. Odd Mushroom Incorporeal. Retract. Lose six HP. Gain an intangible. I think we will be taking that. I mean, not in the right space to use the Spectral Spark super effectively, but I can use it. Let's think ahead and see if we get another defend of any kind. Uh, uh. Let's go strike, strike, float forwards. All right, the defend. And then I guess what we're looking for is Spectral Spark in the next hand, as well as a bunch of skills. Didn't get it. That's okay. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> 77 damage in that fight. I think that's good enough. Right, Rachel. Gain energy and draw for each kind of ghost flame that extinguish them. Uh, Rain of Embers. Deal 7 7 to random enemy X times. 7 and 7 being 7 damage and 7 soul burn. If X is 3 or more, apply 1 weak and vulnerable to all enemies. I'm kind of erring towards not taking any of those and mostly looking for defense. 
fast forward. That makes some sense. So does Ghost Shield, actually. Ghost Shield makes a lot of sense for us. I'd have to put more Ethereal cards in the deck for that to be huge. We can start with an Ethereal card pick up here with the fast... Yeah, let's take the fast forward and then just move on. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one. Find a way to set up as slowly as we possibly can here. Yeah, that'll do it. I'd prefer not to fast forward here if I can avoid that. We could thinking ahead at the end of the turn, put it on top of the deck. Seems reasonable. Okay. Sword of the Night for damage. Throw out the Seer. Use the Float to advance. Yeah, that'll trigger that. Cool. I actually guess I could just fast forward here. Let's do that. Because now I can get another fast forward. Nice. And uh, actually get the strength point out of that, which otherwise I would have had to forfeit. Let's double defend and float to nowhere. Because we should definitely be able to hit these sparks. There we go. Incorporeal is definitely going to be used this turn too. Let's go. Sword of the Night. Strike. In with a Spectral Spark. Incorporeal, as we retract it here, we will extinguish it as well, so. There we go. That looked like that was a l Oh, six damage. It's, it's three on the upgrade, right. I was about to say, that looked like it was a lot more, and it was. There we go. That nets the kill for us quite easily there. Ooh, get the Sword of Night. Nice! Okay, we'll actually advance Sword of the Night and Seer and then kill with the... Kill with the Inflame. Prayer Wheel. Normal enemies drop an additional card reward. Huge for us. Heat Crush and Toasty and Hexagard. Wow, these are all really good. If we're going to be stacking Soul Burn on the target, obviously Heat Crush is really good. Toasty obviously contributes toward the ability to stack Soul Burn on the target. This is... God, this is so expensive. I'm going to take it. I almost never use it. That is to say, Heat Crush in typical runs. It would be nice. It'd be nice to actually have a run really pop off with it. Spectral Spark there as well. Uh, maybe I'll just put Spectral Spark to the top of the deck after this turn, right? So we're thinking ahead first. Or not. So here we fast forward... Defend, Spectral Spark. Seer, Spectral Spark. Fast forward. Defend, Spectral. Seer, Spectral. Frontliner is now dead. Backliner will focus on past this point. Hmm. Easy. All right, Sal, you were right. The special spark is good. It's very, very good. Don't need any of those. Heat crush number two, yikes. Par from beyonds? So just try and get the... Get the cycle up faster, I guess. Well, it's not faster, rather. Get, it, get a more impactful single turn as fast as we can, rather. Okay, if the Searing Ghost Lane goes against the Frontliner here... Damn it. We were going to be able to use Heat Crush for the kill. So I was going to pop the Energy Potion. It's quite a lot of thinking we just done there. To no real avail, unfortunately. Let's retract because we're going to need it over the course of this turn. Then we'll float forwards again. Get 
a single skill out because Spectral Spark is still in the deck, so we'll leave ourselves with one skill left there. And then Spark, Defend, Spark. Fast forward, Spark. We're already done. Nice. Exeguard for the defense. Spectral Spark number two. Do you need to? Do you? Classic Soulburn. If the active Ghost Flame is ignited, extinguish this card and return it to your hand. So you want to so that you can draw them more commonly, but two in the same hand doesn't really seem that effective. But how often are we going to get two in the same hand versus, you know, just drawing another one and having another powerful turn? So we have to stay on the crushing ghost flame as well if we want to be able to utilize it effectively. We're going to need ways to manage that too. All of these seem really good to me. They all seem extremely viable. Both viable and valuable, in fact. Phantom Cloak may win out just due to the defensive factor. If we're going to be doing things like this next floor, we're going to need to defend for a lot longer. Haunted Hand would be trying to get this specific thing to happen faster. Hmm. Sword of the Night, Phantom Cloak, Hexa, and then... I guess fast forward? Triggers it all twice. Nice. 28 HP is a little, little rough. Take the second Phantom Cloak. Now at this point, I just need to focus on picking up actual cards that say defend on them. Think ahead. Hopefully I get a strike. Hmm. Okay, I know what I do. I'm not happy about it though. We use the energy potion so we can strike, heat crush, also throw out the Phantom Cloak afterwards. Getting us to the Crushing Ghost Flame, so now I'm ready. Phantom Cloak for Hexagard as well. All right, single strike just to take out the buffer. Yikes! Can I have the card I put in the deck, please? Thank you. Do more from there, then we spectrally spark him. Rude as hell. We're still not going to be able to do it multiple times. Spark and then fast forward, I guess. Ouch. Legitimately ouch. That was a lot of damage. Well, that's all of the ouch that we can sustain. In that we can't sustain that ouch and we're dead now. Just a little bit too much. What? I saw continue. I was trying to click a new run. This is certainly not the run that just happened, right? I was I was definitely playing the hexagon just then, right? God, I always knew I was gonna go crazy. I just didn't think it was gonna be this soon. Let's try another ascension, eh? 18 minutes into the episode, though, so we've really, really got to turn this one up. Remove two cards from the deck. Yeah, you know what? Let's go. Let's go thin. Got a relatively early shop over on this side, and we didn't give up our money there, so we still have the ability to try and use that as a make or break. Or just cut another card from the deck if that happens to be our prerogative at the time. And kill the frontliner rather than try and be too tricky about it. There we go. That'll get him. Ghost Shield, Spectre Whale, Searing Strike. Take Ghost Shield. It's twice as defensive in terms of. Uh, twice as effective, rather, right now. 
guess we may as well advance there. Twice as effective at the time because we... Well, twice. Uh, just because it's quite likely to be in the same hand as Float a lot of the time now. Which is Ethereal itself by base. And any Ethereal card I add is more likely to be in the same hand as it. It's just... It's just good. Additional consideration for picking up Ethereal cards as well. Speaking of. Take a fast forward. Pretty good Ethereal card. Broken Wing Statue or the Sharpened Fragments. A, a free attack every single turn. So nice. This makes it so much more capable. And then here I've got Ghost Shield. Float moves forward. And then we even get attacks out as well. Oh my gosh. Really cycling through this. We may actually even get to and use the Ghost Inferno. Fast forward. Strike. Strike. Yeah. As long as I play three energy worth of stuff next turn, that's a Ghost. It's an Inferno. What do you got for us? Charge Barrage, Advancing Guard, Haunting Echo. Charge Barrage would be a good way to get damage out with this deck right now, right? Advancing is still really good too. We'll take Charge Barrage first. Look for an Advancing Guard later. They're common. <sighs> so many rares that I just can't have. I try Smack Ghost Shield. Or I could just remove another card from the deck, right? Get... Get far more aggressive with it. You know what? Yeah, Maruva's a bend. We're thin decking. It's the second run in an episode. We have license right now to go a little bit wild. Red Candle. Whenever an attack applies unblocked damage, applies to Soul Burn. Only because that Soul Burn's going to be synergistic with the Soul Burn, I'm going to try and set up myself as well. Okay, we can do this. Strike, strike, float forwards. We advance, use a defend, and then charge barrage as well. If I throw that on you. A guaranteed kill in the middle line in two turns time. Hopefully that takes this turn off. It does not take this turn off. Rude. I think I am just going to defend through it though. Let's float to advance. So then we can fast forward. Go shield. Okay, one target's already dead. We can definitely defend against the incoming... T oh, no. The incoming 10 is going to be incoming 15. We can also defend against that, thankfully. Although we can also do it just by killing the enemy. Then we have an Inferno go off on a single target. What, did we lose 8 HP in this fight? Worth... Worth for this relic. Devil's Darts. No, no. This one's ignited Ghost Flames. This Force Ignites Advances. Yeah, no. This Devil's Devil's Darts would be so good. First time you retract each turn, gain an energy and draw a card. First time. So having a deck that's thick with retract cards is not, not the best approach there. If the active Ghost Flame is ignited, apply 15 Soul Burn. If not, deal 10. No, I'd fight without that as well. No. Uh, right. We may just have to skip forward. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna fast forward there. Try to defend and then float forward. I feel like I shouldn't play Ghost Shield, but I also feel like I have to play Ghost Shields because it's so much block after the enemies have the dazes in their deck. But at the same rate, I need to start applying Soul Burn to these enemies to remove their block. Can really? Really, though? Oof. All the 
I mean, the attacks were at the bottom of the deck, I guess. Just rude. As I keep repeating. Uh, thankfully, yeah, fast forwards extremely likely to turn up there for us. And the Soulburn is doing its job. Frontline's trying to live through this. No, thank you. You are going to die. I'll advance and then play a fast forward. That fast forward will get me all the way to the other ghost flame that I'm trying to use. Just defend and be fine. Yeah, I'm not getting back to Ghost Shield before the next turn, and the next turn is basically the last turn. Yep. So rude. Oh, that fight was so bad. I may end up just dying to the first boss. We don't have another rest between now and then. Ornamental Fan is a great pickup there. Gifts from beyond. Whenever an ethereal card is exhausted. First seal, maybe? Literally just to get some HP back. Duplicate a card in your deck or duplicate two cards at random. Duplicating Charge Barrage seems pretty good. As long as I find some way to defend. Okay. Fast so, forward. Put Ghost Shield as well. One target down in two turns time. What I now need is something that actually just blows up uh, Soul Burn. We're putting it on targets fast enough that it's still worthwhile for us. Hm. Yeah, I don't even need to worry then. Such a huge amount of Soul Burn we can put on the target. I guess one of the ideal things for me would be Bleeding Wound. Heat metal off the soulburn detonates. No, no, no. I would love to fight all three. I cannot fight all three. I will die. Um, upgrading ghost shield for more defense is nice. Removing a strike is probably too much right now. We still need some attacks in the deck to be able to get through those. Let me go for that. All right. And here's where I make a mistake. It's mistake time. One, seer, pass. Right, we'll always have the trigger for it next turn. Mm -hmm. Float forward. If I trigger that, I'm waking the enemy up this turn. Fine. It's too much soul burn to bust up. It's half of their HP bar. Come on. We've also got the skill there, possibly, to try and help defend us. Guess we'll be fishing for that this turn. Haunted hand, skip a beat. I mean, it does come to my hand zero cost, so I could just... Unlimited power right now. And I should just unlimited power right now. What do I play first? First seal, defend, charge barrage? If we had another attack in this hand, we may actually have lethal this turn. Or may have had lethal this turn. This is 21, this is 21, this is 9, 21, 20, 51, uh, 106. You are actually kidding me. Oh no, wait, we totally have it. We just go all out. We've got the unlimited power. I forgot about that. I was like, we're one short. Or we were actually one over because of the red candles, even without the unlimited power. 
Wow. I should have... I, I didn't think it was close. I didn't think it was close at all. Should try to math that out. The seal is why it wasn't close. If the enemy has soul burn, detonate it. Heat shield, Aiden block equals... Uh, it's such good. All right. I, I wanted all of those. If I could take it all three, I would have instantly. This? This is bad. Oh, dear. Sorry. Just get a decent defense out there still. Seer and then float past. Okay, then fast forward as well, and then first seal even two. Beautiful. This is gonna be a really good split on the target. Uh, and by split, I think I mean kill. Yeah, there we go. Rip in peace. We got some HP back off of that as well. Let's go, flame wall, another defend. Yeah, I still need, still just need defense. Ah, bag of knives, perfect. You'll get a crystal shift every single turn, but I'm okay with that. Oh. First heal doesn't need to be played. I'm gonna heal, not back up to full, but I am going to heal. Hmm. Eh, fine. There's, playing the Ghostlane Wall for four soul burn is not the right idea there. I was a little fixated on it, but it was ultimately incorrect. Glad I managed to recognize that in time. Uh, I just, Heat Shield's ethereal. I have to play it, though. Okay, float past. Guess we lose fast forward here. It's too much soul burn to turn down. Ouch, my HP. Look, and infinite blades, eh? Oh, so many ethereal cards that we don't want to burn. So all I do that turn is defend then? So charge barrages are only damage in this fight then. If that's how we go on. I think it is. There we go. Any more of them charge barrage? Alright, I'm happy to lose the ghost shield now. We're within striking distance of the win. Oh, same wall and Josh Brush. I'll get it done. Whew. Armor's tincture. Searing wound. That was the one that I wanted as well. All enemies lose HP equal to their soul burn. I can upgrade it to remove its exhaust. Uh, I'm actually really tempted to transform and upgrade three strikes here. They might become attacks. At least one of them might. An extra energy is pretty big for us too, but we also do play a couple zero cost cards in this deck. I don't want to limit myself from being able to take any more of them. We got skip a beat, force ignite the next ghost flame exhaust. Totally fine with that. Haunting echo, hugely fine with that. Because that'll always trigger, right? We always hit him with the, uh, the shiv first and then the haunting echo. Uh, and then Sword of the Night. That, that was a huge, ridiculous upgrade. May ultimately be worth more than an energy relic, even without a downside. Hell of a call right there, but I'm pretty sure I'm right on it. Emerald, definitely. 
steering wheel needs to be upgraded so that it doesn't exhaust. We're intending to cycle back to that as commonly as we can. Okay, Sword of the Night Strike. Seems reasonable. Sorry, with the crystal ship, I mean. And this is six. Fourteen. Why is the enemy... Oh, right. That's the extra soul burn came out. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, we can use the heat shield then. Okay. Ghost shield fast forward. And then... Crystal Shiv and Haunting Echo. Even that puts out a bunch of Ghost Flames. I don't even have to use the uh, Crystal there as well. Or the uh, Charge Barrage. Wait a second here. Draw an attack. Nope. Of course I wasn't going to draw an attack. There's basically no attack for a two draw. That said... That worked out pretty well. Haunting Echo as well. Yeah, that totally goes in here. Pre-upgraded too. Good lord. <laughs> Ghost Flame Wall? Uh, yeah, let's just float forward. Advance. Uh, I guess I'm okay skipping a beat as well. 18. Okay, I don't need the shield, so I will play the heal just in case it helps. There you go. That's enough ghost flame to kill you. Middle one's still alive. That's enough ghost flame to kill you. Oh. Why did you all have to decide to attack again this turn? I, it's so seldom that you see them all attack on two turns in a row. Uh, I, I'm going to need excess block from something. I'm going to use the armorous tincture here. One. Two. But I wonder if I just try and put that on the ground. Yep. Yeah, that was definitely worthwhile. Thank you for having tried. Searing wound, everyone dies. That's what we're looking for. Speed running when you advance, gain three block. Like, we, we do that constantly. We take it. Even over the spectral spark, yes. Yes. No? Maybe we shouldn't have taken it over there. Uh, I think I was supposed to take that uh, the first spectral spark I see. Oh. I was too excited about the other option. 16 HP for the... The Necronomicon. That's... That's... That's worthwhile. I think. Yeah, Sword of the Night right now is going to give us two energy back, so it plays for free and it also just kills the target off the board. Got him. Just trying to make sure that I don't wait too long to do anything here. Interesting. We can Crystal Shiv Haunting Echo first. Then Ghost Shield, Float, and see Bead Running? Oof. Would have liked to play that Searing Wound. Mayhaps we will get another chance. Uh, let's just keep Heat Shield in there, just in case. Because there goes our Soul Burn now. We have to build up new stacks. Just gonna Haunting Echo double trigger this here. Haunting Echo double triggering the big Inferno Ghost Lane is so good.
<laughs> Actually, I'm going to be super efficient here. Here we go. Skip a beat activates the next ghost flame and then float activates the current ghost flame. And then I use a crystal shiv half activating the next ghost flame. We're ready for the next shiv to activate. Or we're just haunting Echo. Searing wound him. This is a very strong deck. Uh, step through is good, but I think we're nearing the end of the deck, actually. Tentile straw card. Yes, we play a lot of zeros. I need energy, I still think, after this boss, though. Point forward. Unfortunately, we have to lose the heat shield there. Skip a beat right now is great. Thank you for the defense and the strength even. It's the fact that I'm going to have to have a giant defense next turn that's kind of scouring me a bit at the moment. I'm not playing first seal there. I'm working through all of the artifact stacks on that enemy. Okay, I can speed running step through here. Wait, we're on this flame? Oh, we are on this flame. Why are we on this flame? Didn't we? Oh, we didn't meet its condition. I thought we were on this flame. If I had have known we were on Searing Ghost Flame, I think I would have just moved forward and then it would have been step through, speed running, and then haunting Echo. In fact, I'm certain it would have been those. Still reasonable defense, but definitely could have been better. Get out of here! Liquid Bronze, as well as Eerie, Ghost Flame, and a Nightmare Strike. Don't need any of those, thank you. Here's where we probably pop both Liquid Thorns, maybe? Make this fight easy on myself. Especially because if we do draw in the wrong order, this could actually be real painful. Hmm. It's a lot of different ways to approach this. I think it just has to be the one that prioritizes our defense. So that would be... Defend, fast forward. Float. Speed running. Defend all but three. Searing wound gets close to the kill here. So it should be Charge Barrage, skip a beat, and then Searing Wound for the kill. Kills instantly on the turn, but the enemy also had another 54 they were about to take after that. Rewind, pre-opt. No. No, I need to be going forward. Another Ghost Shield, no. Heat Crush, no. Definitely no on that Heat Crush, thank you. So she steps through, gets us to the next. Speed running with Seer and skip a beat. Also finishes that one and ignite for the next one and gets us to the next. Great setup. Hey, that's Sword of the Knights. Totally fine still. 
I mean, I would like to move forward before using the first seal, but if we can't, we can't. Searing wound just constantly coming in clutch here. Really demonstrating quite effectively why I want you in the deck, bud. Heat shield pre-upgraded. Okay, we need an extra energy now. Definitely. One step through, then sear charge barrage. Don't. Ooh. I just didn't want to draw searing. There we go. That's searing. That's fine. This is exactly what we want. Searing. Heat shields. Just watch. Enemy's dead next round. I should probably play as many cards as I can for the sake of the ink bottle, though. Nice. Another Haunting Echo? Is that too much? The deck is quite thick with Haunting Echoes at the moment. In fact, it's got a lot of attacks in. We don't need that. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what we didn't want. Multiple haunting echoes in the same hand. Uh, I don't really mind if I'm weakened. Okay, fine. We'll float forward. Mm, speed running. That's hard to turn down. But I really want to move forward again. Fine. We'll cycle back to speed running, hopefully soon. Yikes. Skip a beat, then fast forward? Oh, it's just not good defense. I'm going to fish for something from the Ecto. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks, the guard's going to be useful. Let's get forward. Let me just... I mean, Hexagard, I don't even have to let it blow up there. Very happy that I didn't. That turn actually ended up being quite good. Another power in here? We do. First seal. Then a charge barrage. Searing wound does a great amount of damage to the enemy. I should have hit them with the red candle trigger first, but ultimately we'll be fine. Again, should have remembered to increment the ink bottle as much as I could to the end. Eternal feather. Extra crispy. Cards and ghost flames apply two more soul burn. I don't know if that's worth the power slot. Upgrades to three or four. Upgrades to become a Nate. Definitely not worth the power slot then. Um, defensive upgrades removing their ethereal because I don't want to have to be like forced to play them. Should step through. See a float through. I'm not going to play another card because the ink bottle's about to trigger and I don't want to draw a card that I would have been sad not to be able to play, which is exactly what would have happened. <laughs> We're just guaranteed to take damage here. We'll skip a beat, hoping we find something defensive, which we do. All right. Charge barrage, charge barrage, and we've still got Searing Wound in the deck, right? Hopefully we draw it next turn. And we do. Okay. Haunting Echo getting even more out on them. And we'll fast forward. And Searing Wound for 85 damage. 
through that block there, and then another 85 by the extra searing. Uh, step through, I guess. Step through, and then Haunting Echo. Haunting Echo again. We're actually getting some good damage out there. Probably one more visit to kill. Don't need another Haunting Echo. Replace the active ghost lane with the crushing or bolstering one. Crushing or bolstering one. Yeah, okay. That's That would have been great for... Oh my god, it's another speed running. It's forked lane as well. Yikes. Maybe I just put my current speed running in my opening hand. It's so much defense it provides for us, and forked flame is going to be great too. Forked flame we definitely take. Charge barrage, probably not. We've got enough of that. Put speed running in your opening hand. Not even able to take it. Good. Um... Yeah, Bad Omen would be really, 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 really good in a Spectral Spark build. Huh, I wonder if there's, like, thematic consistency intended there by the kind of, like, Spectral Spark and the, kind of, like, cosmic demonstration on that card, the, the Meteor, as it looks like. Mm, no attack. Not our best opening. In fact, it may well be our worst. S step through, then defend and... Ooh. Defend and float forwards. And then we can Crystal Shiv and Haunting Echo. Okay. Okay, that worked out really, really well. We've still got no powers left in this deck. We do have Forked Flame. Best I could have done. Okay. Sword of the Night doubles up there. Gives us extra energy back. Or same energy back, rather. We... Forked Flame for a multi-ignite. Actually, if I just want the enemy dead next turn, I'm okay doing that, right? No, because I'm not moving forward this turn. Okay. There we go. Ah, ink bottle. I'll remember it one of these days. Certain. Today is not that day. Hmm. Yeah, we still want to advance there regardless. Thank you, Fast Forward, for rounding out that turn quite effectively there at the end. Uh, the enemy has 61 or more HP when they lose it. They'll apply negative force strength to themselves when they next enter Vinny or play Ragnarok. Uh, strike, step through first seal. Come on. 17 incoming damage. I think I want to go with the charge barrage. We've still got the searing wound in the deck, so... I'm okay taking two damage there. Speaking of... Do all of that, then Searing Wound, then skip a beat. Far beyond necessity there. Enemy's already dead. Who's Infused Drink? Another Searing Wound. Yes, I'll be taking that. Thank you. Soulburn takes four turns to activate. That's fine. I want that because I want the Searing Wounds to hit them for the giant amount of damage. I think I want to hug the left here, try and get the single elite two rests. Wow. Try and get the shop early on. Let's break the ruby key. Hmm. 
We can go shield this turn. It's fine. We crystal shiv, step through. Then we go shield, float through. I need to play the Searing Wind that turn. I've got time, see? Skip a beat, activating the next one, giving us some defense. Charge Barrage into Searing Wound here for another... Kill eventually, as it turns out. I knew I was on the way there. I just couldn't find it. Yeah. This one is. Heat shield. Sword of the Night? No, I can't. Well, actually, I will be defended through that. Yeah, because the first one triggers the Ghost Flame, and then the second one hits again, and then. Shouldn't have played that. Shouldn't have played anything for the rest of the fight. Because now I have to play everything I can do. There you go. Stoke the fire, third seal. No. Enough of the decks upgraded. We don't need the stoke the fire. Oh, oh, skill. Damn. That said, drawing our first... Oh, I still do manage to draw it. I'm not even be able to defend this turn. And it's not Xanatos that got me on that one. Very good. There we go. I don't really like skip a beat too much. Like, I'm fine having it. I'm not going to cut it, but I wouldn't add it, you know? That's a real trash opening hand right there. <sighs> These would all be great. A little bit later. Any incoming damage on this turn. Let's. Haunting Echo fast forward our way into a defend charge barrage. This is still reasonable defense. Okay. Let's skip a beat. In with a charge barrage and then a searing wound. Then we've got the kill, right? As it turns out, that is right. Let me strike a game. Worthy sacrifice? No. We have enough attacks that time warp doesn't make sense. Block on turn three is really good, though. Anything that just gives us block without us having to interact at all is quite good, in fact. I think it's time to get rid of the first seal. It's often clogging the deck. Float, lose nothing. Ah, uh, hell yeah. You, being unbound by the feeble laws of gravity, float over the pit harmlessly. Thank heck. A lot of valuable things we don't want to be losing there. I'll take that. It would have been a single point of strength for us, though. Damn, gosh. Really not a good opening turn. Fast forward, then... Charge Barrage, Charge Barrage, I guess. This is going to be a rough fight for us. Enemy has a lot of HP, as it turns out. Uh... Of 
happen. And then finally we get our first Searing Wound out. I hope I get back to another Searing Wound before this pops. Although extremely unlikely. I can dream. Ooh. Get to activate this one twice if I want. I think I do. Because then I have some strength scaling even if I fail all other. Okay, do we draw an attack? We do not. It's fine. Do I really want to skip the beat right now? Yep. Evidently I do. Keep my 176 block generated on that turn. Uh, it's, it's reasonably effective, I guess. Wait, I'm down here? Uh oh. Guess I should fork to flame then. Now we are where I thought I was. Definitely popping the block potion that turn. Swanting Echo in the defense. I thought. Wait a second. If this is active advance, I get I get punked by that every single time. I just forget it all the time. Uh, four and zero cost cards. Feels kind of essential right now, right? Apocalypse now gain two energy. The Inferno Ghost Flame becomes active. Worthy sacrifice. Sacrifice something in the head. Um, we should use the worthy sacrifice here for. Should we? Yes. We're looking for something ethereal. That's not ethereal, but it is good. Oh, this is ethereal. Okay, so Ghost Shield was already active. Whoops. Oh no, Ghost Flame goes active again there. Time lighting another one up. Spectral spark. Back spectral spark. Okay, I could have done something. Screw it. No, that was. It's not what I thought that was. Didn't think that was that card, but it is that card. Incineration, Haunted Hand, Extra Crispy. Haunted Hand's pretty good. Get this started as fast as we possibly can. Let's break both of those before I forget. Upgrade the Searing Wound, the number, the second one. And we're going to want Forked upgraded too. This is also going to be a pretty rough one, unfortunately. 50 incoming. Uh... It's Haunted Hand and then Float Forward. Great. Giving us the ability now to Shiv and Haunting Echo. And we can Vault Lane. I just got to make sure that I leave the Searing Wound in the deck. There we go. Great, we've got Heat Shield on the right turn as well. Despite the fact that we don't ultimately need it here because we do have the Searing Wound. Come on. Uh oh. Like, we're not going to die, but... Oh, no, wait, the enemy's... The enemy's soul, but Burn is actually going off this turn. No, no, we're fine. Although, 
now life is weird. Okay, uh, let's float forward. Great, then we sort of might double up the... And all is well again. Whew. Burning touch is okay, but I don't think I need it. I don't think I want to take a second haunted hand though as well. Do I end up burning out cards that I really do need to be holding on to? There goes the heat shield. That's fine though. The rest of it was way worse. Economicon curse comes back to hand. Can't even try and escape from that one. Just due to the amount we gain from the heat shields, calipers would be ridiculous. Just gonna fast forward there, I think. Do we have any powers that we didn't play? No. Okay. Crystal Shiv, Haunting Echo, double activates there. We use Float to move forward. Then we play Step Through just to trigger that, making sure that we can also move past it. Sear out for the rest of it. There's another Searing Wound, we're fine. Play that and then nothing else so that we can try and keep the ink bottle for an extra card at the start of the next turn. Next hand, rather, sir. Worthy Sacrifice was not awful there, but it also wasn't really necessary. Okay, I'll step through still. Should have played the speedrunning first, I guess, but it's not going to matter. Also should have struck first, or shivved first. Might use the shiving outside of the uh, silent. Great. Skip a beat. Anything better? No, another heat shield. Would have been far better next turn. That's okay. There's a... Uh... Uh-oh. Searing wind's still in the draw pile. Fine, I may end up just over-blocking this turn. And in fact, we do. Extra Soulburn should be going against the backliner. A lot of this is just getting confused. Uh, heat shields. Play as many zeros as I can right now, I guess. Nice. Spectral Spark again. Heat Crush would actually double hit, and its damage is increased by Soul Burn. I guess it's time for Heat Crush in this deck. Okay, well, let's have it do 20 more damage then. If we're going to have it, we're going to have it. Advancing Guard never showed up past that first one, unfortunately. He's very, very keen on it. Okay. Is it just Forked Plane, then? Obviously got Haunted Hand. Uh, sure, Charge Barrage and Searing Wound are the final two to go out, then. Curve four damage there. Could have been a hell of a lot worse. One, two. Another haunting echo and a charge barrage. This is just not gonna work out for us because everyone was targeted at the wrong time. We can have the midline coming back up. But now maybe I get to kill them in a single turn. With 
no available tools. Never mind. Let's say no available tools to do so. Immediately got provided with them. Phantom Cloak. No, when I need to defend, I can already over defend. Small amounts of defense aren't really what we're looking for. So no night, rather we float past. We're looking for two skills, which we get, defend, and then another charge barrage. We've gone past one searing wound so far. Mmm, this is great. We forked flame. Step through, getting to the power. And then we fast forward. Then we crystal shift, haunting echo. <gasps> oh, really, really sped through that one. All right. And then we'll just blow the enemy up, I guess. Seems reasonable. Nope. We're far over our quota on all of those things. Okay. It's our way forward. Uh... Oh, it's ethereal. I have to play it. It's ethereal and it is my damage engine. And then step through gives us hit and haunting. Ow. Oh, good damage. Skip a beat into charge barrage. Yeah, 170 damage, I think, is just about worth it there. Fast forward to finally get off of that. Draw has the heat shield, it's not really necessary. Although, we heat shield. I didn't expect that one. Got the perfect card, and we also got the uh, Sundial Trigger to be able to play it. Yeah, just cutting cards from this deck will make it more efficient than adding anything. There's not a bunch of deck trashing going on by the enemy, so we ought just be totally fine. It's just about execution speed. And unfortunately, I do actually have uh, an appointment waiting now, so I do need to try and get this over as quickly as possible. Up. Oh. Uh, I, mean, I guess you are attacking the sun, sure. Step through works there. We can defend and then fast forward. We even throw out a skipper beat. Oh. Get a point of strength and some extra defense on that turn. Let's throw the Sword of the Night out there. Enemy's big hit is going off this turn. Unfortunately, I don't have excess defense that I can really access at all. All right, we're going to be taking 16 here. Crush. 60 damage two times. Oh. Let's float forward. Strike with the shiv. And then he crushed twice there. No, we haunting echo. Charged barrage. 
then we heat crush twice. And the enemy is dead this turn. Any number of different ways. Pocket watch, interesting. Phantom cloak? No, same reason we turned it down last time. Moldy smooth stone, though. That's an easy one to take. Let's hope it gets another heat crush. Eh, yeah, screw it. This is the run where heat crush is good. We're taking it. Uh, as for that, probably discard the upgrade and take a power potion. Yeah, it's got to be Fork Flame. Activating an extra Ghost Flame is worth a decent amount to us. Especially as the fights get longer. Shiver our way straight into a step through. Use Haunted Hand here even, in fact. I'm fine with letting Seer die here, definitely. Less fine about losing the heat shield, but that's okay. That's what Haunted Hand's gonna do for us. I defend six at the end of the turn. Maybe I only play three things this turn. One, two, three. Actually use the pocket watch. I was figuring it was just not ever really gonna be part of our game plan. Oh, maybe it shouldn't have been. Crush has got to go out. And he dead. Forward and... Didn't lose too many things there. Okay. We fast forward forked flame definitely. And then heat crush after that. So it's crystal shiv then fork flame. So I activate them two times. That is to say the current active one two times. Right. Heat crush. Heat crush. So we've got another heat crush in this deck. Yeah, there it is. Proof perfect we had one. I really don't think I play it this turn, but then I lose the ethereal one. Wait, is this the final? No, it's not. Defects the final. Uh, yeah, I guess. Double activate it, sure. That did not work how I thought it was going to. We ended up on the crushing ghost flame rather than the searing. Not that I have a problem with it, it's just wasn't expecting to be here. Let's searing and then float past. Great. And we can fast forward, step through to activate this, Haunting Echo to activate it again. Well, the enemy. I'll even leave a Crystal Shiver in the deck for later. It's charitable. <laughs> I mean, I have no soul burn on the enemy, so. Fine, you get to avoid that this time. Next draw of Heat Crush. Hopefully we'll have a decent amount up by then. Or not. I 
guess 39 is okay. I'm not settling for anything less than just blowing the enemy up, though. Which is honestly, like, a, a me problem, I guess. That to be the low bar I expect. I'm so glad I didn't go with Velvet Choker here. It wouldn't have been appropriate. Boom. Oh, uh, he crushed Necronomicon. You're really, really, really showing off your strength there. Really flexing your muscles. There's the uh, now buffs. I'm not going to be reading those all of the time. I'm going to take some damage here. Those two times I play a zero cost card each turn, I take four damage. They hit you with the zero cost card. And the zero cost card. What? Those two times you play a zero cost card each turn, take four. I'm certain I've activated that. Game doesn't seem to think so, which I'm okay with. Should also probably get the power potion out earlier rather than later. Yeah, I'll I'll gain an intensity constantly. Thank you here. Okay, thirteen coming from the enemy. I have to play the Bewildered. I'm mad about it, but I do have to do it. Sword of the Knight just for the damage, then Searing Wound before I float forward. This will shiver, then a Forked Flame. Unfortunately, we've given the enemy a lot of strength as well. Okay, we got two turns to kill the enemy, basically. And I figured it was coming down to this. Fast forward, and we can shiv with a haunting echo two times. Use the ghost armor there for even more shields. Great. So that only built to 52 here. I, I can't play the Bewildered, otherwise I can't play Heat Crush. Wow, that actually rocks. Charge Barrage. Let's Heat Crush for uh, damage. That soul burn's gonna go off and deal basically. Wait, it no, it worked. It applied and dealt its damage on the next turn. Hell yeah! I didn't think it was gonna do that. Right, Colors potion. What do you got for us? Blind. Let's so ignite the next ghost flame. Currently activating this one as well. I, I can't Steering Wound. I can't even really play anything else. Wait, no. No, I totally can. Got a kill. Woo! All right. Now, this is going to have to be a real quick ending because I got the, the thing to go to. So, for the moment, my name is Rhapsody, the name of the game. It's, it's downfall. Hopefully, you've been enjoying yourselves. We finally got that build to work. Quite pleased with it. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my contents on this game, past, present, and future. If you do like the videos, please leave a like. It does help me get my content out to new people, and hopefully we will see you next time.